Hey guys, uh, welcome back. I just wanted to say that I split the video into two pieces because I knew that most people would rather see some of the newer stuff and there was no reason to have them skip through a huge video just to get to that part. So, um, I'm starting off with the Duelist Genesis and continuing on till the most recent pack. So I hope you enjoy. The 28th pack was the Duelist Genesis. And I just want to say that beginning with this set onwards, um, you could find sometimes find both a rare and possibly a super rare, ultra rare, secret rare, or ghost rare in the pack. So I think what they started saying was uh, guaranteed rare in every pack on some of the sets. The main cards from this set were probably, obviously because this, this set was the introduction to the synchro cards. So you've got Stardust Dragon, Red Dragon Archfiend, Goyo Guardian, Magical Android, and Thought Ruler Archfiend. And I'm sure there are tons more good cards in that set. Oh, would you look at that? Emergency Teleport. The 29th pack was Crossroads of Chaos, and uh, from this point on I'm going to go a little bit more in depth because we're getting closer to uh, today's packs. So, <clears throat> this set included many new cards and synchro monsters from Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds, uh, many plant type, psychic type, and zombie type monsters in support, and TCG exclusives included a new level 4 tuner monster, as well as spellcaster and zombie support, and it introduced the Mortronic and Iron Chain archetypes. Um, specific cards that, in my opinion, would, were really great about this set would have to be Rose Warrior of Revenge. Um, you know, most of the Morphtronics in this set were really good. Titanial Princess of Camellias, Plague Spreader Zombie, you know, enough said. Black Rose Dragon, Doom Kaiser Dragon, Revive King Hades, Tempest Magician, and Gladiator Beast Rediari. The 30th pack was Crimson Crisis. This pack's sneak peek event was delayed due to the Konami vs. Upper Deck dispute that occurred. Crimson Crisis includes Reactor, Blackwing, and Assault Mode archetypes, and many cards that work together with already existing theme cards, uh, as you'll see in a second. So you've got four good cards in this set. I don't know, Debris Dragon, Blackwing Gale, the Whirlwind, and a whole bunch. This was the um, advent of the Blackwings, so a lot of great cards in this set. Twilight Rose Knight, Black Salvo, Gladiator Beast Sam Knight, Dark Strike Fighter, enough said, Blackwing Armor Master, Arcanite Magician, and on and on. The 31st pack in the series was Raging Battle. Um, it introduced Quaki Meru and Earthbound Immortal archetypes, and further support for Blackwing and Morphtronic archetypes. As for the cards that stand out to me in Raging Battle, I'd have to say... I don't know. Um, this, this pack is all around really good. It's... Especially good if you're building, you know, plants, black wings, morphtronic, psychic, earthbound immortals, kawaki meru, you know, so on and so forth. But I guess the main single cards that I would say were uh, deep sea diva, black wing armed wing, one for one, black whirlwind, iron core of kawaki meru, forbidden chalice, delta crow, anti reverse, and probably trap stone. The 32nd pack in the series was Ancient Prophecy, and this personally was when I returned to Yu-Gi-Oh! So I missed out on that entire chunk, um, which I'm not going to say that it was a bad chunk, but there was probably a lot of stuff that I'm glad that I missed in that chunk. So anyway, in this set we've got uh, further support for Earthbound Immortals, introduces the Fortune Lady archetype, and includes support for Kwaki Meru archetype as well as more Blackwing and, and uh, Double X Saber support. The 33rd pack was Stardust Overdrive and I just wanted to say that when I say 33rd I don't mean exactly 33rd because there's been a, a whole number of extra stuff including you know Duelist packs and so on and so forth and uh, the next pack after this is Hidden Arsenal so from this point on it's just um, you know I guess the 33rd in my list, and so on. So this pack um, included more Earthbound Immortals and Black Wings cards, introduced the first insect archetype, the Spiders, along with the new Reptilian and Jinn of Ritual archetypes, and included new support for Kwaki Meru, Light Sworn, Fortune Ladies, Earthbound Immortals, Reptilian, and Six Samurai archetypes. The next pack that came out was Hidden Arsenal, and it was a new pack that brought cards from the Dual Terminal Arcade Machine series that were only available in Japan up until this point. Um, it introduces the Ice Barrier, Mist Valley, and Worm archetypes, 
to the TCG, as well as further support for Ally of Justice, Neos, Karibo, Cyber Dragon, Flamevel, and X Saber cards. And obviously, the most popular card from this set was Bryonic, which is still used very often today. The 35th pack that I am mentioning is Absolute Power Force. Um, it introduced the Cycler and Inca archetypes and further support for Majestic, X Saber, Double X Saber, Synchron, Reptilian, Gin of Rituals, Spider, Cyber Dragon, Umi, Kwaki Meru, Earthbound Immortal, and Gravekeepers. The 36th pack is The Shining Darkness, and it introduced further support for Blackwing, obviously. Kawaki Meru, Morphtronics, Infernity, Ice Barrier, Charmers, Synchron, Archfiend, Battery Man, Gradius, Worm, X Saber, and Ally of Justice archetypes. But it was also the introduction of the Wa and Genix archetypes. And this pack was huge for Infernities. This thing spawned them, but um, yeah. This was also the pack where I recently left Yu Gi Oh! a while ago. And um, yeah, so anything from this point on till. More recently, I also missed. And for the 37th pack, we've got Hidden Arsenal 2, which um, introduced Naturia, Jurak, and Fabled archetypes, but also included further support for Genix, Ice Barrier, Mist Valley, Flamevel, Ally of Justice, and Worm cards. And obviously, the cover card, Dulor and Tiger King of the Ice Barrier, was one of the best cards. The 38th pack was Duelist Revolution, and it introduced fusion monsters that require a synchro monster as their fusion material monster. It introduced the scrap archetype and it included further support for Watt, Naturia, and Amazonas archetypes. Um, it also had a great number of beast type monsters from Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds. The 39th pack was Starstrike Blast. Um, it introduced cosmic synchro monsters and further support for Scrap, Archfiend, Watt, Naturia, Blackwing, Ice Barrier, Synchron, Kawaki Meru, Skull Servant, Gaia Knight, and Monarch archetypes, but it also introduced the new Karakuri archetype. The 40th pack on this list was Hidden Arsenal 3, and it introduced the Argenix, Dragonity, and Dragonity Knight archetypes to the TCG, as well as further support for Ice Barrier, Naturia, Fabled, Jurak, Ally of Justice, and Worm cards. The 41st pack was Storm of Ragnarok, and it introduced the new Azer, Nordic, and Legendary Six Samurai, as well as Symphonic Warriors archetypes, and it included further support for the Scrap, Karakuri, Blackwing, Six Samurai, Miss Valley, Watt, and Vylon cards. The 42nd pack was Hidden Arsenal 4, Trishula's Triumph. And uh, obviously the most valued card in this pack is Trishula, Dragon of the Ice Barrier. But it also included some more Genex cards, Fabled cards, Dragonity, Jurak, Naturia, Ice Barrier, and Flamevel as well. And the 43rd and newest pack to be released uh, on this list is Extreme Victory. And it introduces the new TG and Mechlord archetypes to the TCG. And it has new support for Junk, Resonator, Blackwing, Morphtronic, The Six Samurai, Karakuri, Scrap, Gladiator Beast, Frog, Gishki, Worm, Rose, Nordic, Elemental Hero, Neos, Vampire, Naturia, and Psychic Type Monsters. Okay. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Um, hopefully it's not as boring in the final cut as it was to make it because Konami has released a lot of packs since uh, Yu-Gi-Oh!'s debut back in... I think it was either 1999 or 2000, so, you know, 11 or 12 years and over 40 packs and a whole bunch of other stuff. I personally, I think I would prefer it if they released less packs but had more to each pack, you know, it would give some more incentive to buy each pack and have some more, you know, secrets and ultras and so forth to be searching for, but, um, you know, I guess I'm good with everything, but, uh, yeah, so hopefully you guys enjoyed, and hopefully you learned some stuff, and uh, I'm hoping to have some more original content out, because I know that um, it's definitely visible in my first videos when I did stuff that no one else was really doing at the time. Those videos got a, a lot more views than any of the other videos that I did at that time period. So I'm going to try to continue to do stuff like that, and uh, I think it'll be helpful in the sense that it'll make my channel stand out as well. So, um... 
yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, this is probably the second part of two because I don't think most people would want to see from the very beginning all the way to the end in the current pack. The video would be extremely long and I think most people are just interested within the last like 10 packs or so for the fact that when they go to the store they probably want to know what they're about to buy. So yeah, thank you guys very much and I'll see you guys later. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Peace.